Jesus brought radical change to the people of his day. He spoke with tax collectors like Levi the son of Alphaeus and also to Zacchaeus. He ate with them too. They changed their ways and followed him. The religious people, like the Pharisees and the religious scholars, criticised Jesus. They couldn't understand why he was giving time and energy to these people. They seemed to be so careless about religion and God that there was no point wasting time upon them. Jesus said that he hadn't come to spend time on healthy and holy people. Instead, he had come to bring hope and healing to sinners and sick people. How does that make you feel today? Which group of people would you put yourself into? Do you need Jesus to bring you hope and health and direction for the future? Or are you able, with his help, to bring hope, health and direction for the future to the people who are around you? This church and congregation are here for both groups of people. Both groups need to help each other in order for this to work. Those who have known Jesus and been part of the congregation for a long time need to help those who are new to church life to learn how to follow Jesus for themselves and then to help others to follow him too. Of course, some people will feel able to help in some areas and not in others. These are learning opportunities for us all. Those who have questions or who are learning to do something that they haven't done very much of before need help from others who can teach and show them what they need to know and learn. It's never too late to learn something new. That's what both of our passages tell us today. In the Old Testament book of Job, we read that Job was a wealthy man. He was blameless and righteous, who feared God and turned away from evil temptations. He had three daughters and seven sons, thousands of sheep and cattle, and very many servants. He is de described as the greatest of all the people in the East. However, in a short period of time, Job lost everything except his wife and his friends. His wife and his friends criticised Job and accused him, him of some unknown sin against God. And that's why all these troubles have come upon him. Job rejects their accusations. But Elihu, the young man, brings his wisdom into the situation. It is a long speech, which is then extended by God himself. And Job confesses to God that his complaint against what had happened was unjustified, and he repents. Job's friends, who gave false counsel, are humiliated, and the book ends by saying that God restored to Job another three daughters and seven sons, and twice as much wealth as he had before. The book of Job is a long book that helps us to question how it is that God blesses us amidst all the ups and downs of life. We know that life today is turbulent and unpredictable, but actually life is always like that. What is certain and predictable is the love and mercy of God. He journeys with us through even the darkest of times such as those experienced by Job. His story is referenced many times in the books of the New Testament as the early church struggled to understand how God wanted them to go forward with him in the ways that Jesus had shown them. The second part of our reading from Mark speaks about the need for changes. People asked Jesus why he and his disciples were not observing the normal Jewish fasting rules. And Jesus said that it was because he was with them and they wouldn't need to fast until later. We had a wedding in my family a fortnight ago when my daughter got married. That was a day of great celebration. But afterwards, our whole family are having to adjust to the new situation. It was good that Liz and I had a fortnight with them to help us get started with the new circumstances. 
Before Jesus was executed on the cross, he assured his disciples, his followers, that they would not be left on their own. The Holy Spirit would come and remind them of everything he had told them and would teach them things that Jesus had not had time to teach them. Jesus was only with his disciples for three years. It was enough to get them started. The Apostle Paul did not become a believer until after Jesus had gone. It took him 20 years before he was ready to set out with Barnabas and Mark on their first missionary journey. He visited lots of places, helping many new churches to get started. But in most places, Paul didn't stay a long time. Only in Corinth and Ephesus did Paul stay longer than a year, and perhaps in Rome too, before he himself was executed for his faith in Jesus. Paul had to deal with many new situations that Jesus and his disciples never faced. Mark includes in his Gospels two of the examples that Jesus gives about the need for change. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth onto an old garment because it will shrink and tear a hole worse than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins because the new wine will burst the old skins. These two passages are not so easy to understand today as they were in the days of Jesus. We use, we use glass bottles to store our wine these days, and modern fabrics don't shrink as much as those in the times of Jesus. Jesus didn't tell his disciples what changes they would have to make in the future. They needed to work out that for themselves, with, with the Holy Spirit to lead and guide them. But changes would be needed, or else what they had would be lost. We have a big quiz coming up in a few weeks' time. It's good to ask questions, but we need to listen to the answers. They're not always the same as the last time we asked the questions. Why did Jesus eat with tax collectors and sinners? It was because God loved them, and they needed to hear that. No one else was telling them, so Jesus did. That's our purpose in the church, to tell people and show people that God loves them by the love that we show them. Amen.